But as we speak, China wants to write the rules for the world's fastest growing region. That would put our workers and our businesses at a disadvantage. Why would we let that happen? We should write those rules. We should level the playing field. And that's why I'm asking both parties to give me trade promotion authority to Trade promotion authority or fast track. Without fast track, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, these other trade agreements will not pass. Everybody recognizes that. President Obama recognizes that. Fast Track is a procedural mechanism that delegates all of Congress's constitutional authority to set the contents of our trade agreements over to the executive branch. The Founding Fathers, when they wrote the Constitution, gave Congress exclusive control to set the terms of commerce with foreign nations. And this wasn't an accident. For trade policy, they wanted to give power to Congress, the branch closest to the people, and to avoid the lived experience of the problem of having the king, the president, control that power. And in fact, our country started in a major trade war. It was a tariff on tea that caused the Boston Tea Party. The founders of this country said, we don't want the king, the president, to do that to us. And that's why they gave the authority to Congress. It goes directly to the floor, and the president is guaranteed in 90 days a yes or no vote with no filibuster, limited debate, and no amendments. So it's not an anti-Obama thing. It's a no giveaway of the ability of Congress to make our laws. And that's what Fast Track is, and that's why it would enable something as outrageous as the TPP. On that, but again, uh, Fast Track is critically important to stop because you know, if you negotiate something in secret and then you have a speeded up process to um, decide whether or not to uh, finalize it, then it essentially gets voted on without anyone knowing what's in it. And that, if you want to talk about, you know, undermining democracy, that's how you do it. So trade's gone on forever. I mean, here we, we have a knife from Maine. It's made out of chert. And it was only made in one part of Maine by indigenous tribes 10,000 years ago. And this item shows up all over the East Coast. It was traded, trade in goods. Before that, there are lots of benefits. TPP, amongst its 29 chapters, only five of which have anything to do with trade, one of the non-trade chapters is a chapter about procurement, government procurement rules. And in that chapter, the requirement is that the U.S. government treat bids from any company in any TPP country identically to how they would treat a U.S. company's bid. But by America, and by American, two laws, the first one from 1934, requires you give a preference to a domestic company so that when we're spending our tax dollars, instead of offshoring our tax dollars, we're reinvesting them in our communities. Well, the goal is to get rid of local rules and to get rid of state rules and to really just have one rule. If we want to be able to um, label food in a way, whether where it's from, or also label it about things like GMO. And one of the concerns with the Trans-Pacific Partnership is that uh, it's literally going to flood the marketplace with extremely cheap um, dairy products, particularly from New Zealand. And that one of the consequences of that is going to be to drive down dairy prices here in Maine. And Folks, if you have not called your representative and both of your senators and gotten them to commit to you in writing that they will oppose fast track if and when it comes for a vote, which could be as soon as the third week of April, if you have not done that, you must do that. Please do that. <laughs> Write them snail mail, email, call. The switchboard at the Capitol can connect you. If you're not sure who your representative is, all you need is your zip code. It, the the Capitol switchboard, you should write this down and stick it on a yellow sticky on your fridge for all purposes. 202-225-3121. Oh.